Hello and welcome to another video of mine. I thought today um, I would do a recap of my, vi of my garden. For those of you that don't know me either from your social media or know me personally, then you'll not know that this garden uh, was actually made from scratch. I made this garden from scratch, from nothing. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of little stories involved in this garden um, that you might not realise. So I'm just going to just um, go through it. See, when we first moved in this property, our garden looked like that. It looked like that. Just, just a plain, just a plain ordinary lawn. And I've always been a very keen gardener, and uh, I wanted a garden. So. I had a vision, and a vision, I mean, what I mean is I had a vision in my head, and I had a plan, and I thought, right, I can sort this garden out. And this has took seven, eight years to get to this point. Right, so we're going to go through the garden. Right. And I've planted everything in this garden. Uh, and they've all been planted either from small plants or from seedlings or from cuttings that I've done myself. And I don't just mean like seedlings and cuttings from little plants. Uh, I mean like this. I mean like, see this hedgerow here, right, this hedgerow. Now, the story behind these is these are actually these are actually cuttings from Southport. This, this edge, it's actually a Southport edge. See what I do when we used to go out to to Southport, you know, for, for day to to go look at seaside and and have fish and chips and green coffee and stuff like that. <laughs> I'd walk about with my knife in my pocket and a plastic bag and every time I saw something thinking oh I like that that would look okay in my garden I'd just pinch a bit I'd like pinch a bit like like that I'd like cut it off there put it in my plastic bag and uh, bring it home and then I'd pot it on and make it into trees and make it into <laughs> so that's what that is that is actually a south port in fact this this edge is a bit this these plants are a bit different from them and this is actually from under the pier as if you if anybody's in Southport under the pier you'll see these bushes well these are what these are these are the offspring of that of that bush that's next to the pier uh, next to the yeah yeah a pier isn't it? yeah it's a pier next to the pier in in, in Southport and I've got another. While we're on, while we're on the story, I've got another. I've got another um, interesting story about that as well. You see this big. Uh, what's it? It's a. I think it's a. Is it? A, it's like a yucca, like a big yucca, isn't it? Now that is. Well, that must be seven foot tall. That, if you can't tell. Now that is from. Butlins at Ingham Elzar. Not the actual plant. We went to Butlins. We went to Butlins and Ingham Elz, in in Ingham Elz, and we didn't go while September after school after school holidays had, had finished. And they have a lot of these plants on the coastal path in Butlins that goes to the that goes to their section of beach at the front. You, you've probably, if you've been, you, 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 you will have seen them. But when we went, that, was, that had flowered and it needed to produce some seeds. So I pinched the seeds and grew that. Well, this is going back six years. This is going back six years, maybe. That, that's going back six years. 
So, so I've got little stories like that in my garden. So in my garden, it's not just a case of, you know, I went to the shop and bought a plant, because I didn't. I've always, I, I like to do my own planting. I like to do my own plants. It's like this one. It's like these, it's like these here. This is what we call a Trevor tree. It's actually a Portuguese laurel. Now those are cuttings of this. this. This is the mother plant, if you like. This is the mother plant. Now this was a seedling that I found at his old property that had blown over from next door. And they called the man next door, Trevor. And his wife, who's, you know. And uh, and so I just basically, I thought, I looked at it, I thought, that doesn't look like a weed, that. That looks like, that looks like a plant. So I dug it up. It was only a tiny little seedling. Maybe, you know, this sort of size. Ink ground, growing ink ground, about that sort of size. Tiny little thing, like, like this sort of size. Right, and I dug it up, put it in a plant pot, and then looked after it. And eventually, it grew into that, which has then been, which has then been cut. Had cuttings took off it, and now I'm, I'm growing, growing it into that. Now I'm, I'm making this part of this. Uh, now there, are two more seedlings coming off that, and all from one seedlings, and that's. That's, that's what I like to do. That's what I call proper gardening, that. And I, you, but your garden, you, you see your garden is always, your garden is always uh, evolving over the, over the years. And it never stops evolving, and that's what, I, that's what I love about it. See this big thing here? This is a, this is a bamboo, and it's massive. This is, this is a bamboo. This is where I get all my canes from. I, I never buy no garden canes for my veg plot and stuff because um, I grow my own. It saves a fortune, you know. They're not cheap, them. They're about, I don't know, 10 quid for about 10. And if you want eight footers, you're talking 30 quid. See, that's... that's uh, these are some canes that are drying out, you see. And they come off me, uh, off me bamboo, and they're eight foot tall. And if I were to buy them, they cost me thirty quid. And I can do that every year. I can do that every year. As you can see, my garden is so big that I decided it would take me, it would take me three and a half hours to cut my lawn. Because the lawn is so big, I don't know if you can tell how big that garden is, but that's big. It's big enough to have three rooms. That's a six foot shed, that, there. So I decided to put it into three rooms and have three dedicated rooms and a path up the middle. So this room is basically my utility room. It's got a tree in it, it's got my shed in it. And you can't really do much with it. You know, you can sit under a tree if you like, or go to your shed. But I've made a nice little... I love this bit. It's like a secret sort of wooded... Uh, a wooden pathway up to the up to the back uh, vegetable allotment. It's like... I like that. That's lovely, that. Oh, it evokes me... It evokes memories of my childhood. Because uh, I, I grew up in a village that that were near some some woodland and I always used to walk into woods when I was a kid and it reminds me of that. And then this room this room is where we plunk uh, is where we plonk as tents or as gazebos and stuff in nice summer weather so we can sit out and you know. And then the bit at the back, which you've all seen before in another video I'm sure where the bit at the back um, were just well I didn't know what to do with it actually and I come across a brain wave this June beginning of this June I thought I oh, know 
let's have a go at growing some veg. So I just turned this, so I turned it into this. Which is, uh, I wish I'd done it sooner, to be honest. And this chair was kindly donated by the in-laws. <laughs> So all in all, uh, it took seven or eight years to get this garden settled and mature. Uh, but I think in the end it's worked fine. It took a while. Plus, of course, the upside is because I've got all these beds in this in this back in this back part. I've got all these beds in this back part. Then I don't have to. I've got less lawn to cut, let's put it that way. I've got less lawn to cut, and if if I can think of a, a plan to make these beds even bigger, I will do. So there's even less lawn to cut. But yeah, so that's, that's my garden. As it stands today, in 2022. Now, I'll come back in five years' time and it might not be like this. It might be completely different again. Because your garden, like, is, like I said, it's always evolving. Oh, this thing's a nightmare. This thing I can't grow for love. This thing is about, I don't know, it must be six, seven years old. It refuses to grow. It just goes funny on me. You, I know why. It's because it likes, it likes really, really shaded spots. And I just ain't got no... Basically, you've got to plant it under a tree. You've got to plant it under a bush and then it, it'll like that. I, the, the point to it is, I don't know, know what the point to it is. I'm probably going to dig that out eventually because I'm fed up of trying to grow it. But I've got a lot of buddlias because I, like I like to attract the butterflies. I've got a big buddlia there. I don't know if you can see that. That must be, that must be 19 foot tall. That's a right buddlia, that. It's massive, it's done flowering now, like, but... Yeah. And if you want some, if you want some bay leaves, I'm the man to come to. Because that is a bay tree, that is a bay tree. Again, 18 foot tall. <laughs> Must be 18 foot tall that bay tree. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, that's just a, a recap of the garden in 2022. <laughs>